Borderlands 3 is about the choices you make with the family you're given and the family you choose. And it's about how we choose to fill the void left by those that hurt us the most. And how some of those choices aren't exactly healthy. <laughs> and there's also a gun that shoots corrosive burgers that you can put a poop skin on because the universe craves balance. Hello, I'm Dr. Elisa Melendez, also known as Elisa Rock Doc on the internet, and this is what Borderlands, but specifically Borderlands 3, means to me. This is Shem! Holy influencer of the children of the vault! What do you want, Crambot? Hello, bloodthirsty maniac! It is I, Claptrap, Slayer of the Destroyer, and Super General of the Crimson Raiders! <sighs> So my first impressions of Borderlands were actually pretty positive, and it came across uh, my life at a very important time. You see, uh, my partner and I were huge gamers, and it was our first year living together in married wedded bliss. And unfortunately, we were both gamers, but we enjoyed completely different genres. So we'd have a game night, but that would pretty much consist of us basically back to back in our office um, on separate PCs and he's playing Counter-Strike and I'm playing World of Warcraft and at some point we kind of looked at each other and we were kind of like this isn't this isn't a great way to interact with each other and spend time with each other as a as a as an emotional bonding unit so we wanted to see if we could find a game that we could play together on the couch. And so we went on this website, uh, Co-Optimus, uh, that basically looked at all sorts of different co-op games that you could play together. And we saw this first person shooter that was also an RPG. And it looked like it had this kind of cool comic book style. And apparently it had a funny story, which I was into. So we gave it a go. And that game was Borderlands. And then, of course, once I found out that I could actually play as a red-headed fire witch with cool tattoos, I, I was 100% in. <laughs> What'd you say you was gonna do to my gal pal Lil? God Queen Tyreen will drink soup from the skull of the great heretic! Ah! My bad! Finger slipped! <laughs> Didn't see you there. The experience was absolutely life changing, and it did come in a at a huge significant point in my life because it made me feel comfortable with another genre of games that I had kind of abandoned at one point, and. We'd played so many more things together after that. We ended up investing in a two TV, two Xbox setup so that we could keep finding co-op games to play together. And it kept inspiring me as I kept playing more games and being open to more and more things, really falling in love with video games and wanting to pursue more work and more study in the industry. I ended up getting my PhD studying music games since I'm a musician, but Borderlands was so effective on me that at one point, if I hadn't chosen to go through with studying music games, I probably would have written my PhD dissertation on the women of Borderlands and specifically how it is that when you have more than one woman featured in your game, shocker, you can actually allow these people to be fully fledged, flawed human beings. And that was something that was really, really refreshing in a world where I wasn't used to seeing women at all in my video games, much less multiple, much less with such a wide variety of fun personalities and flaws and traits uh, to be able to enjoy with them. 
And because of that, Borderlands became a huge mainstay for us, uh, and especially me. I ended up falling in love with the characters and the story. I ended up getting an asymmetrical haircut, and, and I actually did end up cosplaying as Lilith at one point. And as I was making my way through my PhD and making my way into the industry, Borderlands date nights were pretty much a mainstay. And when my industry journey finally took me to Gearbox, it was an absolute dream come true. And then to eventually voice someone in Borderlands 3? I still can't believe it's real sometimes. <laughs> It's hard to pinpoint one exact moment when I felt the game falling into place, but I do remember the first time that I used Lilith's action skill after I beefed it up enough, and I did... Oh, the, the amount of crowd control and the amount of power that I felt in that moment, I, I absolutely fell in love. Um, but it consistently won me over through the story and through the games and through all the DLCs, it consistently won me over with the humor and the world building and the characters. I would get excited for their returns and subsequent DLCs, like old friends were coming back, and I got angry for them, and I got angry with them, and I mourned them when we lost them in future installments, no spoilers. But for Borderlands 3 in particular, the moment where it kind of clicked for me as something that I knew that I was absolutely going to have a blast um, working on and then especially working on as the voice of Tyreen Calypso. In one of my first recording sessions, I, I would get my lines in blocks and we would record different missions at a time and... I had this initial mission where actually if you kind of stand outside the Holy Broadcast Center near the start of the game, you can kind of listen to all of these different shout outs that Tyreen would do to all of her loyal super fans. And I was reading them kind of all in a row and sometimes I would catch myself reading too far ahead as I was delivering a line and then absolutely cracking up because I could not get through these absolutely increasingly absurd <laughs> shout outs without laughing and it was always such a treat and always such a fun surprise to see what the writers were gonna make us say next and it was always an absolute delight and so laughing with them but also making them laugh I will never forget the first time I ever made the writers laugh during a table read um, due, to, due to an accent that I did, um, due to a, a particular set of line reads, any time that I could make them laugh. I mean, these folks and folks adjacent to these folks have been making me laugh for the better part of a decade. So for me to interpret their words in such a way that they find it funny. Um, I, I saw that as an honor every time I made them laugh and I tried to chase that every, every chance I could and I still do. I love them. Greetings, chum. How does the day find you? Fear not, friend. I am keeping the voices at bay with this mighty cap atop my head. My favorite thing about the franchise um, in particular is that it's a franchise in a, in a crowded slate of games where you could pick up a weapon and numbers fly over people's heads. It's a franchise that breaks the fourth wall. It's a vibrant color palette. It doesn't take itself too seriously. It's, it's, it's candy coated and it's a breath of fresh air. And it can also make me cry like a silly person. And it has so much heart and it's fantastic. And also in turn, my favorite thing about Borderlands is also seeing the creativity and the passion from the community that it inspires. The cosplayers, the content creators, I mean, working in the building at Gearbox, 
I had the chance to see how much detail and how much work went into the character designs, all the clothing, the environments, the weapon parts, and then to see all of that hard work being appreciated and then recreated in things like cosplay is, is absolutely inspiring to me and it it kind of helps me realize why it is that we as kind of creators and entertainers kind of do the things we do. So it's an incredibly humbling experience on the fan end to enjoy this game and play this game as a fan. But it's even more humbling to have this kind of feedback loop sensation of being a huge fan, seeing all of the work that goes into it, just working with this incredible crew of developers, but then also being a part of it from a voice acting standpoint, it's it's kind of a wild experience and Borderlands is kind of a life-changing franchise and Borderlands 3 is kind of one of the most important games, if not the most important game of my life. Hey Lil, bad luck to take a ship out of orbit without a name. She's already got a name. Sanctuary. The last time that I played Borderlands was, I think, sometime last week. You see, uh, my husband and I try to get as much out of each playthrough of every Borderlands game as we can. So we do one playthrough on normal. And as each DLC comes out, we would do each playthrough on normal. And then we go back again <laughs> and we do a second playthrough um, in kind of ultimate Vault Hunter or true Vault Hunter mode, whichever it is for that game. And so through each playthrough, we try to do every mission we can and especially uncover every single inch of the map because I do, we, we, we cannot leave any stone left unturned. We cannot leave any echo log unlistened to. And so at the moment, because we like to be thorough, it's taking us a little bit longer than usual, but we are making our way through the first playthrough of Borderlands 3's um, DLC 4. I main Amara, by the way, because sirens are the best. <laughs> Don't at me, though. Um, I will always classically play Sirens um, as, as an RPG nerd and as someone who always played mages um, when I would play games like Neverwinter Nights and World of Warcraft. Sirens forever. And I like to really hone in and identify with a character and really build and shape. And I'm also the kind of person who respects kind of every single time I load in the game and start it up. I don't know if I'm the only one. So... Because of that, a playthrough isn't just a playthrough for me. <laughs> I am deeply invested in this avatar that I have created. Um, and then I get to have a really, really fun out-of-body experience when I fight my way to kill the character that I voiced. <laughs> So many human delights Maurice has not tasted. What is a gingered ale? If I had to sell Borderlands the franchise to a new player, then I would simply say that it is the looter shooter with a heart of gold. Just that simple. <laughs> For Borderlands 3 specifically, it's a game about meeting your heroes and confronting their flaws. It's about chosen family and... It's also got this festive-ass saurian dinosaur creature named Maurice who I would absolutely die for. And that is what Borderlands, and specifically Borderlands 3, means to me.